A team of students from Marist College, Yangoji in Abuja, have created two devices called Aquabot and Sensebox to monitor water and air quality. To build the devices, the students leverage technologies like Internet of Things and data analytics. Let's hear from them. This is Maris College, Yangoji in Abuja, the nation's capital. And it is within the environment that some senior students of a Catholic-based school are taking their education further by applying theory to practice. According to the students, it was after a visit to one of their immediate communities for a cultural event that they had drive to solve some lingering problems affecting the people there. When our school went for a cultural event in Anibari Community Kualin Area Council, we encountered a little girl named Amina. Amina was looking like a wasting child. Like, you could see all her bones. She was so bad. And then, as a group of teenagers, as long as we have our worries, we think about different things that doesn't even relate or make sense. But we're very concerned about this girl. So when we saw her, we talked to our parents, we greeted them, and then we came back to school. When we came back to school, we researched more about it and found out that about 37% of children in Nigeria suffer from severe, from severe acute malnutrition. This is very bad, and it's, one of the, it's the second largest in the world, a country as big as Nigeria, you can imagine. So we we're very sad, and then we thought, oh, we have had IoT in school, so why don't we try to work towards nutrition? It all started when we visited the Kuali area for a program, a cultural day, and we observed that they make use of firewood to cook, and they are through the children there, we are, they had stunted growth, kwashoko, visible kwashokos, they were you see someone of five years, of ten years, looking like they were five years, and the shocking part was the people, the water they used to wash was the same they used to cook and drink. So we came back, we talked amongst ourselves that we had to help them as a neighboring school, and we are also very privileged. We can't just let them be suffering this. So we came together, we agreed that we were going to create devices water quality and air quality to help them to monitor their surroundings. Then when we dived further, when we searched on the internet, it was not just, it's not just Nigeria facing this problem, it's the whole world. And it's, I think it's very unfortunate that nobody is really looking at it. We are looking at money, nobody's looking at water and air. What we use every day is being polluted constantly. So we decided to now only to really do something about it. The findings were all the students needed to get to work. They returned to the laboratory in school and began their research on possible solutions. after which they came up with the Aquabot and Sensebox, which are quality monitoring devices for water and air pollution. The Sensebox is calibrated using the WHO World Health Organization Air Quality Monitoring Index. That is from 0 to 50 ppm. ppm means parts per million. From 0 to 50 ppm, the air is good. From 50 to 100 ppm, the air is moderate. And from 100 to above, the air is bad and requires immediate attention. Our device is made up of an air quality monitoring sensor, which we tag the, the MQ-135. It's also made up of a turbidity and humidity sensor, which is inside the temperature and humidity sensor. It's inside the device. Now, it's made up of various jumper wires and LCD, which displays the score or the values. Now, this is the value for the temperature. 
a value for the humidity. The humidity is in percentage, temperature is in degree Celsius. Now it also contains LEDs, that is light emitting diodes. Once it's red light, it means that the air is bad. It's, once it shows red light, now it's showing green light, it means that the air is good. Once the air is moderate, it shows yellow light, it means the air is moderate. And the air is not so good, but you need to, need to look at, like, t like take note of what is going on before it exceeds moderate. And then once it's red, it triggers an alarm, an instant alarm, and it sends an instant notification to the owner of this device via his smartphone or computer in a format that is very easy to interpret. For these senior students, some of which are in their final school session, balancing this project with the academics was quite a challenge, but it wasn't the only one they encountered. The first challenge we faced was how do we get materials for this project? We got financial, we had to tell our parents, we had to consult them. Our parents have been with us throughout this ride, we're very grateful to them. The, we got financial aid for the, the um, equipment used to making this thing. It was it was stressful with the recession and everything. It was really hard, but we we went through. We got the materials and challenges we faced. Like our school, we are students and we have to balance the um, stage life and the academic life, and we still have to do well. We had different challenges like. When someone is comfortable to come, not everybody's comfortable to come and discuss at the same time, but after some time, we were able to overcome those challenges. We also had, since our class range was not the same class, when I'm like, not everybody had the same time range, not everybody had the same opinion. Everybody wanted to give their opinion and make sure that it was implemented in practice. The school's ICT head, who also doubles as the advisor of the tech team, speaks on the journey with the students. Lots that has to be done. So some of the challenges we encountered um, surrounds helping the students to understand that, yes, they can actually, um, um, you know, develop their ideas into innovative solutions that will address major unmet needs in our society, especially um, on air and water as our project uh, captures. Another challenge we encountered also is um, trying to get them trained because at the point the students came up with these ideas, they had no training. So we had to organize series of uh, trainings for them, um, teach them um, how to use um, ICT to profile the solutions that they intend to deliver. We had to partner with Sage Nigeria, who came in with their mentors, technical crew. We organized a series of classes for the students outside the regular uh, learning uh, mm -hmm. environment. So, and we are happy that the students were able to, you know, volunteer themselves, avail themselves. And today, we talk about the projects that we have developed. For these students, getting financial support to help develop their innovation is key, as it will also help those coming after them once they pass the baton. But currently, they have received the support of Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation. Dr. Bonaya Onu, who granted them the sum of 5 million naira to patent their innovation. <laughs>